a secret location. It's the Tom Likas Show. Poles, you keep throwing these poles at me. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Pablo Francisco will join us in about 20 minutes from right now. Bring you Pablo Francisco right here in the studio. And in the meantime, your telephone calls at 1-800-5-800-TOM. Sarah Palin says her kooky, crazy daughter should be getting married even sooner than the date they were thinking about next summer. She also told People Magazine, Sarah did, that uh, she considers herself an intellectual. (laughs) 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Sean. On the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Yes. I have a question. I, I listen every day, but uh, like a couple callers ago, that lady that wanted to kind of debate you. I'm just curious how come you kind of just shut her off, and uh, I like to. I didn't shut debate. her off. She she got cut off by her own telephone. Well, I understand that, but I mean. So I, there I, you I, go. There's nothing else you can say about it. Be some of these people a little bit more. Do what? You're, now your phone is cutting out. What are you saying? I'd like to see you maybe debate some of these people a little bit. Well, I'll debate them when they're actually in a mode of debating. And a debate is one uh, kind of a phone call where you go back and forth. Uh, these are the people who call in and want to talk for 14 minutes without being interrupted. Uh, that's not going to be happening. Okay. Um, I understand. Yeah, I was just curious. Cause... Anyone wants to have a debate with me, I'm fine with that. But that means give and take. Sure. Will do, Tom. All right. Uh, can you take me out, uh, Bong Rip? Yes. No golf. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. Let's say hello here to Dave on the Tom Likas show. Hello? Yes. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. I had a quick question for you. I know everyone's hating on the whole Palin thing, but, uh, which I'm not voting for her. I'm voting for, you know, Barack. But uh, I have a weird deal. Is it weird not to vote for her, but think about her all the time? I'm out, you know, I'm online. I'm fantasizing about her. It's, it's a whole, that's the whole panel on my mind thing. I, I can't get rid of her. You know, you that's your it. fetish. Well, I mean, uh, uh, you know, guys' masturbatory uh, inspiration can come from anywhere. Yeah, she's, she's hot. Now, let me ask you a question. I know you wouldn't vote for her, but would you hammer one out with her? Well, put it this way, uh, she's not my type, uh, number one, because she's a mother of five. Uh, number two, I'm not into the turkey neck. I'm not into the, uh, you know, if you've seen her with, uh, you know, the, the, with, like open almost down to the cleavage, you could see a lot of spots and a lot of imperfections there. Uh, you know, late at night, dark bar, nobody yeah. around. Who knows? Maybe I'd knock one out with her. I'm thinking, I'm thinking mother of five. That means she's seasoned. That means she's a vet. She knows what she's yeah, doing. Yeah, but, but she's also a vet. Uh, but <laughs> she's also a very fertile vet. That's true. That's very true. Hey, Tom, can you take me out the bong rip? Indeed I can. <coughs> Charles on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tommy boy. Hey. Um, I'm an avid libertarian. I love that philosophy. And so I'm really on the fence uh, for this election. I, I hate McCain. I hate Palin. So classically, I, I would lean towards a Republican point of view just because it, it seems a little bit more in line with my philosophies. But this election, I really don't know what to do. So do you have any advice on, like, why... Uh, You know why you're supporting Obama as a libertarian yourself? Well, let's start with this. As a, and again, I'm not a capital L libertarian, but as a fiscal conservative, um, no Republican out there right now strikes me as someone who wants to shrink the size of government. Yeah. So Um, that reason for voting against the Democrat has been taken away. Yeah. So you don't you don't think that. Obama's going to expand more programs faster than... I don't see how you could expand any faster than we've expanded in the last eight years. The national debt has tripled since 2001. Uh, um, do you think his monetary policy is going to be in line with, like, as far as his uh, 
conversations with Bernanke? Is he going to be uh, one to, you know, keep things in check and try to avoid another disaster that we've just had? Well, I, I look, I think anyone who gets in there is going to try to do that. Uh, but John McCain has been right in there in the thick of two of the biggest, uh, not just individual bank failures, two of the biggest bank calamities this country has ever had in the 80s and again now. Yeah. And John McCain uh, was one of the Keating Five. Yeah, yeah, I really hate that pair. I, Palin is just so moronic and such a dumb political choice. It's so silly. Um, another quick question, if... And this is obviously a dumb question because it, it's not possible. But if Ron Paul was against Obama, would you be for him? I don't think Ron Paul could win. I don't think Ron Paul could ever win. I don't think anyone who's ever been a candidate of the Libertarian Party can ever be the president. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's it's kind of sad. Maybe maybe years and years down the road. Um, no, no, I don't think ever. I, you know, I was on the Oprah Winfrey show in 1988. And when I was on the Oprah Winfrey show, uh, in 1988, Jesse Jackson had announced his candidacy for president. And um, I was on the Oprah Winfrey show as a quote-unquote controversial radio personality. And I said in front of that crowd in 1988, which was largely African-American, I said, Jesse Jackson will never ever be the president of the United States. <laughs> that takes some balls. That's crazy. And, and you can only imagine what, what Oprah thought about that. Uh, after the show, I was in the green room, and Oprah, who at the time was not nearly as well-known as she is today, Oprah came in and said, I wanted you to meet somebody. This is Mrs. Jesse Jackson. And she introduced me to Jesse Jackson's wife, who he later screwed around on and had a bastard job with. But here we are 20 years later, and Jesse Jackson, now it's obvious to everybody he'll never be the president. But uh, there are some things that just have to be said. And Ron Paul yeah. is one of those people. He will never be president. Not not now, not five years from now, not, not 50 years from now. Yeah. Nor will any libertarian. Yeah, I know. It, it kind of breaks my heart. I hope this, bipartis or this partisan uh, system we have at least cools down or something happens in the next few elections because I really can't stand it anymore. The only two choices. Uh, well, but it's been that way, by the way, almost forever, with few exceptions. Mostly there have been two choices. Few elections, there were three, including 1968. There have been three. Uh, we had that one election with Ross Perot uh, back in 92. So there have been some elections uh, with more than two candidates. The third party candidate does not win. That's the way it is. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Bill on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? It's going great. Oh, that's good. Hey, uh, I wanted to talk about, uh, Palin. Just how much of a bonehead you have to be to vote for her. You know, it's just, it seems like the same people voting with Palin and McCain signs in their yard have foreclosure notices on the same house. You know, the same <laughs> The same idiots that buy the houses that they don't have the money for, you know? It's just they don't really look into the facts, you know? Well, they're the kind of people who could vote for somebody who says, not only are we going to go into an expensive war, but we're going to cut your taxes. Yeah. Which is, what is exactly what happened to us in this country in the last eight years. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. You know, and I don't even see how uh, people are, how they're still running, you know? It's just Sarah Palin's going all out. She's going to hockey games and going here and there. She's the family mom, the hockey mom. You know, it's just, who's going to buy that, you know? Maybe yeah, and, some... and now she's wearing $1,500 outfits paid for by the Republican Party. Yeah, she's, she's trying to get on E-Entertainment Weekly, or is she trying to be our president? You know, she needs to make up her mind. I agree with that. Chris on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah, well, I'm wondering why is it that um, nobody's mentioned the fact that her children are supposed to be in school, school is in session, yet she's pimping her children out to the Republican Party. Well, I, I do know that uh, in that story about the $150,000 that the Republican Party spent to outfit Sarah Palin, they also outfitted her husband, Todd, and yeah. her kids, including her baby. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And where, where are our Obama's children? They're at home, in school, doing their job, learning to be the future of our country. I'm wondering how many Down syndrome children have worn designer outfits. 
I don't know, my perfectly well-minded children whose father is in the military, can't. we can't afford even a pair of Levi's. Well, I think that uh, explains a lot. And uh, a real hockey mom would not be walking around in items uh, purchased at Saks Fifth Avenue. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Comedian Pablo Francisco will join us within 10 minutes. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Brian. Tom Likas Show. Hello. How's it going? Great. I just wanted to ask you if uh, you had a chance to see the movie W and what your thoughts were on it. Have not seen it yet. Uh, in my mind, Oliver Stone has been irrelevant for years, so... It was not on the top of my priority list. Uh, what did you think? Well, I definitely, uh, first of all, don't go into the movie, uh, don't not see the movie because it got low ratings. I think the reason that it got uh, poor ratings was uh, people were going into the movie expecting a bush bashing flick, and it was it was really anything but. Um, it was actually quite an interesting piece. It wasn't it wasn't humorous really at all. The only the three the three or four only funny scenes in the movie were the only three or four scenes you saw in the preview. So uh, you go into it expecting like a bush basher, but actually you know it's really it's it's uh, you come out respecting it. You come out understanding where he came from, and I think it the movie. Uh, you can not really pass the blame, but you can understand why George made the decisions he made in his presidency, and he can attribute most of his failures probably to his cabinet. And I think it's—I uh, I think it was a great movie. It's in my top twenty of all time. It was just phenomenal. Wow! All right, that's uh, interesting because uh, again, uh, uh, you know, I haven't paid much attention to Oliver Stone in recent years, uh, and uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of the critics are not that uh, predisposed towards him as well. But uh, if you say so. Maybe I'll get a look. Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Awesome. Listen, I am a, a first-time caller. I live actually in Phoenix, Arizona, but every time I'm out uh, in the L.A. County area, I listen to you. I want to get back to the subject. Sarah Palin's daughter is a slut. That's all I have to say. I mean, like mother, like daughter, number one. This kid's going to be ruined. This kid, Levi, is going to be ruined for the rest of his life. And how do you have family values if your 16, 17-year-old daughter is getting pregnant? I, I totally agree with you. I mean, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's, everyone's getting on you about, uh, you know, uh, it's almost like a Hannity and Colton show today. And it's like, listen, the fact of the matter is we talk about sex on this show, and, and uh, she's a slut. She's doing what every other woman in this country does. She's cornering her man, and she's, uh, look, I'm 36, and I have, still have no kids that I know of, actually, but uh, it's just outrageous. No, I, I totally agree with you. But uh, keep in mind, those TV talk shows, you know, and the radio talk shows, uh, for that matter, the AM far right-wing radio programs, uh, let's face it, uh, sex is bad. Must be abstinence, but if you're a Republican and your kid gets knocked up, it's fantastic. Isn't that great? Well, uh, unfor unfortunately, you know, I, I'm I'm with you. I mean, no kids. I'm I'm very happy without them. Do I ever want them? Heck no. I like my fortune, and I like dealing with what I like dealing with. Beautiful women every other night. So we have to have a, a new one here, Tom. Take me out Levi style. Levi style? What would that be? That would be with a shotgun. <laughs> All right, here you go. Wow. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Juan on the Tom Likas show. What's up, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing okay. Uh, I just wanted to answer your question on um, how Sarah Palin is spending so much money on her um, designer suits and all her makeup and stuff. Um, her answer is, uh, it's okay to purchase all those items because once she's done with it, she's going to turn around and give it away to charity. Yeah, but uh, the uh, contributors to the Republican Party still paid for those clothes. Yeah, but it's all right in her mind because uh, once she's done, she's just going to turn around and give it away to the goodwill or to charity and stuff. So, And the only reason she's saying that is because uh, she got caught. Yep. Uh, can you take me out old school with a long hit? Yes. Yes, I can.
No cough. TJ on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's going on, Tom? Not much. Well, first of all, I'd like to say I am a non-conservative Republican. I uh, totally got to talk about this uh, wealth distribution thing. Uh, my business generates well over 250 a year, but I'm a single dad with five kids. And that crushes a guy like me because my expenses are tremendous with those children. And it would be cheaper for me to lay off a couple of guys than have a 4% tax increase. Because if he wants to bring it back up to what it was during the Clinton administration, that absolutely hurts guys like me. And what do you do about that? You, you well, go, uh, again, I you know I I think there's more to our economy than just what are called taxes. The but weak do- the weak dollar has I, been killing the average person. I agree, and no doubt the real estate crisis is what really hurt everybody. Not taxes. I mean, even a tax increase wouldn't have killed people if the economy wasn't so bad. But with the economy so bad, tax tax increase is just a bad idea. Well, I happen to believe that a tax increase. Uh, would bring us more in line with uh, what we are spending. And they are unwilling to cut over there in Congress. And I do believe that less budget deficits mean a stronger dollar. And a stronger dollar, and it's been proven, a stronger dollar means lower gasoline prices. Uh, I agree. I totally agree with that. But don't you, do you think it's unfair that people who do not hustle and generate money should be getting that money? That oh, thinking- first of all, I do not assume that people who make under two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year don't hustle. I do believe that most people uh, work very hard in this country. In fact, harder than people that. in most countries. I, I believe that. But I and so I- therefore, we're, you're talking about a minuscule fraction of the people who are out there. But when they're talking, people who don't even pay taxes are going to get tax credit. That's that's just not a good idea. And then I, I got another quick issue I'd like to touch with you. Barack Obama has been... Well, if you a, feel that way, then you must be against the economic stimulus programs. No, I, I, I'm, I'm not. I, I'm Why not? I'm, well, I mean, basically, I'm concerned... You're, that you're, sending checks to pe- you're sending checks to people who don't pay taxes. Why? Okay. During a crisis... Oh, then it's okay to send money to those lazy sons of bitches uh, when 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 it when it uh, when it uh, somehow benefits you. No, during during a crisis, I don't support it at all. But but I mean, when we're when we're but that's when they do it. When I talk about the stimulus, I'm not talking about the seven hundred billion dollars we gave to banks. That's the bailout. Right, the stimulus I'm talking ridiculous. about is the one that Ben Bernanke has been endorsing, uh, the one where you send everybody a check for three hundred or seven hundred or eight hundred dollars, whatever. Yeah, that should wait. That should not even be considered right but now. But it's That's already been done. It was done once, and now they want to do it again. And I don't support it right now. I support it at, at, at good times. This is not a but good. But you time, do but... understand. You do understand that it is Republicans who are behind I, I, that. Absolutely. And like I said, I'm a non-conservative Republican. I'm not across the board Republican. I I lean Republican. I just always have. So that way, I'm, I'm real big on on strong military. I believe that's the foundation of this country. Um, I do have an issue with 20 years in a church that doesn't allow whites. And, again, uh, again, that, again. Uh, you know. <laughs> This this stuff has nothing to do with whether someone is qualified to be the president of the United States. But do you consider that support of racism? Again, uh, I know people who belong to country clubs uh, where they don't allow Jews, they don't allow women, they don't allow blacks. Absolutely, but they're not running for president. But if they did, I don't think that has anything to do with whether they're qualified to be president. Uh, you really don't believe that? You really no, think that no. you support a racism, I- any sort of... Well, let me uh, give you an example. I, I bought a home this year in Santa Barbara County for $3 million. Okay. And, and do you know how many African Americans live in my community uh, where I bought the house? Nine. I would, I would guess it would be very low. Right. Uh, no, any African American who has $3 million is welcome to move in, but let's be realistic. Right. That's a that's a small group. Doesn't 
doesn't matter what you so, have. So there, to there are various ways of exclusion. Now, I didn't buy the property because of that reason. Quite the contrary. I bought the property because I, I, I like grapes, I like wine, and I like open space. Um, I My other home is in Hollywood, which is a, the most ethically diverse community I've ever lived in. I agree, but if if they if let's say blacks were banned in your neighborhood, would you have moved there? Would no, I have moved? No, not. I I wouldn't. But the fact that Barack Obama was in a, the church with Reverend Wright has nothing to do with whether he's competent or qualified to be president. Nothing. It is a red herring that people like you are bringing out desperately in the last two weeks of this campaign, and and you know the the the, the ship has already sailed. The horse has left the barn. You're, you're all desperately flogging all this stuff, and it doesn't work. No one cares. Well, no. I mean, people do care. I mean, the mass majority. No, does not. they don't. If they did, John McCain would be in the lead, which he's not. The mass majority does not care. A great deal of Americans do. But they not do. enough. Not enough that it's going to make any difference. Apparently not enough, and that is sad. Now, let me ask you: Do you think that race is playing a, a role in? the percentage of blacks coming out to vote for McCain. Do I think what now? Do you think race is playing a role in the percentage of blacks voting, I mean, voting for Barack Obama? Um, well, it may play a role, but I don't think it's the primary reason because uh, Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton didn't even have a prayer. Well, no, I agree. Not a prayer because they, they were not very smart people. I give it to you. Barack Obama is a smart dude. No question. Educated, speaks well, talented dude on that. I mean, but the, the increase in black voters is up to 70% ever in history. I mean, that's, that's, well, good is, that. so what? Well, no, I mean, do you think race plays a role in that? I think race plays a role in everything, but that doesn't mean it's the primary reason. That Barack Obama could not be the president unless white people favor him. Right. And white people favor him, and that's that. If 70% of the... Of the black it doesn't matter. If 100% of all the black people in America voted for Barack Obama, that would be 20 million votes, which would not be enough to win. No, but it's, en it's enough to win states. Again, you would not win enough electoral votes to win. Well, one state could... Could decide this election. Uh, well, again, you are you are hair splitting, nitpicking. You're desperate, like the rest of the Republicans. I'm absolutely not desperate. I'm concerned, is what I am. It has again. If every black person, including women, children, babies, uh, everybody, voted for Barack Obama, it would not be enough votes to win. Well, it could change an election if it breaks well, down to a. It state. would not be enough to win. Barack Obama couldn't win without white people like yourself. No, I totally agree. I, I totally agree. I Barack Obama will win because white. Barack Obama will win because white people are going to vote for him. Oh, I I, I agree. I, I'm a, so I'm it doesn't matter. The race issue may be a factor, but it really doesn't matter. Comedian Pablo Francisco's in studio coming up. Tom like it. One eight hundred. Five eight hundred Tom one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six 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 the Tom Likas show. It's the Tom Likas show. Likas one hundred one is just half an hour from right now. So line up, boys. With your questions for your professor, Mike is one what is in 30 minutes from now. Joining us in the studio now is Pablo Francisco. Hey, thanks for coming in. Yeah, what's happening, man? I just want to let everybody know that college student, I want you to vote. It's really important. I go to college. I want everybody to vote and everything else. And I go to hot, work at Hot Topic part-time. <laughs> and where we have? Let me tell you something, man. <laughs> Ivory Thomas, man. I like to do a shout-out. Yes, Obama. I like to do Obama. He's a dude. I like to do a shout-out to the probation officer up in uh, <laughs> Crenshaw. His name is Ivory Thomas or something like that. Ivory Thomas on Prop 1,000. 
and stuff. He's a liar. He goes back on his word. But I love you, my man. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Get ready for the makers of the shield. Come bad probation officer. That's right. On Prop 1000, he does starring Danny Glover. Hey, man. You gotta get out of here. They're trying to kill you. And Gary Busey. Hey, man, let me tell you something, man. You go to AA, get your car towed by AAA, and then you tell your thing to two guy pilots on AA Airlines and everything else. Yeah, we're here. How you doing, Tom? <laughs> I'm doing okay. I'd like to introduce a friend of mine. His name is um, Sean. Sean Savoy. Yeah, he's the he's yeah, the black yeah. portion of the black portion of the show. What's going on, Tom? <laughs> Who you voting fan? for? Who you voting? I'm voting for Obama. You know, he's the black guy. I'm a black guy. Right I'm always talking about what he's doing, but he's black, and I'll be voting for him. Yeah, and, uh, on that but anyway. I'm kind of kind of torn though because I like McCain too because he looks kind of like Colonel Sanders, and I do love chicken. That's right, man. Just, so. And the recipe, you know what I'm saying? Just put it all in Here's there. Here's the special recipe. Here's the special recipe. Let me tell you something. That's right, Obama. And it's McCain to get hired. This is Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's Schwarzenegger whole, too. He just he just cussed him. Like just, Arnold. That's right here. That's right. I'm talking McCain. I'm McCain. Right. I approve. Of, I approve of him talking. That's <laughs> right, man. So yeah, come on down to the Irvine Improv if you want to see some shows. It's gonna be that good because I'm Billy Mays here. That's right, Billy Mays <laughs> with OxyClean. It's that easy. Kaboom! I say it loud so it paralyzes that membrane of common sense. That's right. I think the American public is that stupid. The ones are closing a fishbowl. Oh, what? Well, pissing crap? I'm Barack Obama, Obama and I approve that message. Yeah. Are you in good hands with all state? Are you in good hands? Is it just me? Yeah, or do, yeah. do Latinos sound like they're uh, out of breath? Hello? He's going to be here. He's He's They're always the ones with the chip, too. Hello? You always get that one Latino with four teeth missing, and he sounds like a goblin. What's wrong with your family? What's the deal? Are you in good hands, the lost state? Tom, uh, Tom, all my friends think that if Barack gets elected, the uh, weed's going to be legalized. And, uh... <laughs> Well, is that so? Yeah, well, I don't know how I feel about that because I don't know if I want weed to be legalized personally because I don't know if I want everybody high. I mean, it's funny, like, high with like, you and your friends, but, like, if everybody was high, I think there'd be a big lack of responsibility. Like, uh -huh, you'd be am. high, cops would be high, cops chase uh -huh. you in a low speed car chase. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, look okay, out, that's a weed joke. Hey! Weed. Yeah. 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 It's, it's awesome. medical marijuana, that's what I'm telling you. It's cannabis sativus, that's right. He has a license for medical marijuana that only gives him 15 more minutes with the cops. Let me tell you something, man. The great Egyptians used to use <laughs> cannabis sativus. That's right. It's a great drug. It takes 30 days to get out of your system. It's so stony, it can't get out of your blood. That's right, man. It should be legal. And I work at Hot Topic. I'm manager. <laughs> Somebody go to Hot Topic and tell them that Halloween is I'm not... Like <laughs> Death Metal, Slayer, right on. They're vegetarians. <laughs> <laughs> this and it's always that one girl who does about it. He does me like Vongo and cry. And it's better. That's right. Are you in good hands with all state? It's just me. Old people should use Viagra so they don't roll off the bed. <laughs> La Vitra sounds like a black girl I went to school with. Yo, La Vitra! <laughs> you keep it up, girl. All right, Cialis sounds like something you get after sex. All right, I got Cialis right there by my my my. my but did we go to Swingers Club in Ontario just recently? I, I was, heard it. Yeah, it was, yeah. I was dancing. Going, why is there food there? Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, they're serving food there. You try to get a sandwich while right? everyone's humping. <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> cooties. Do you do you do you have cooties? <laughs> Hey! I'm a cane and I approve that message. That's your cane. You approve that message. Okay, so come on down to the Irvine Show. This is Pablo Francisco, ADD, EFG, HIJK, Elemental People. Come on down. Sidekick Sean Savoy. Yeah, yeah. Sean Kick Show. Sean Savoy. He's going for Barack Obama. And yeah, right. Little brother run the country. I never, ever. Let me tell you something, man. I met my friend who's a relative of Barack Obama. I swear to God. And my dad married his sister. And uh, she said to me in the kitchen, I will never, ever take the place of your mama, boy. You know mama loves shortening. I will never, ever, ever take the place of your mama, boy. All right, let's go to the clip. Come to the show, Irvine. The well, Mavericks, we promise. The Mavericks, you promise. Come on down to the show. It's going to be good. And like Tony Montana says, you come on down to the show, okay? It's going to be good. But right now, I'm going to do some impressions for you. Huh? This is going to be...
It's going to be. Oh, I'm trying to get to it. I'm trying. Oh, this oh. is going to be, okay? Oh, Ozzy Osbourne oh. at Subway Sandwich. Oh, with lettuce. And what kind of lettuce you want, bro? What bread? <laughs> okay. But this is Bill Cosby at Subway Sandwich. <laughs> we have no roast beef. <laughs> All right. Here's, here is Paula Abdul at Subway Sandwich. I'm not hungry. Okay, now. <laughs> Gary Busey at Subway Sandwich. Put some whiskey on that. Right there, man. Put it right in there. Get a little frisky. Get a little crazy. A little ha ha. A little ha right. John, Johnny Carson on cocaine. Here we go. I'm, I'm, I'm so high right now. I'm so, I'm so high. I, I am so high. I can put a Yugo in over I'm a little paranoid. A little paranoid. Is that a new drummer? Is that a new drummer? Someone give this black man some, some glasses. He'd be incognito. <laughs> Let's go to the clip. Let's go to the clip. So come on down. <laughs> come on down. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Come oh down to God. Irvine Improv. All right. And let me try yeah, to get yeah. these times out real quick, man. Uh, let me tell you, we're going to be there at uh, tonight at 8, 8 o'clock. Friday, two shows, 8 o'clock and 10.30. Three shows on Saturday, 7, 9, and 11. And Sunday at seven. <laughs> come on, Doc. You get tired. You get, come on, Doc. You got it. Saying the times and everything. You got it. The flux capacitor. Come on. Look, is it just me or is, what is it? Tango race so powerful it makes black people speak with an English accent. Hello. <laughs> are you ready to tango right? Hey, Marcus. Marcus, are you okay? <laughs> All right. Let's go to Dave and Buster's where they serve Budweiser with energy. They have Budweiser with energy, so you can go around Dave and Buster's and play all your games. That's all you need. B to the E, Budweiser with energy. Now it can smack my wife around a little longer. <laughs> Come here. Where are you giving those pills? What the hell's going on? B to the E. Now it can drive drunk a little longer with Budweiser <laughs> energy. <laughs> I'm Sarah Pale, and I approve that message. That's right. <laughs> Pablo Francisco. Thank you so much for coming in. Hey, man. Thank you, Irvine man. Good Improv. to see you. Good to see you, too. This weekend, it's uh, tonight through Sunday at the Irvine Improv. Cool. Pablo Francisco, call for details, 949-854-5455. You got that? Nine four nine. Yeah, 949-854-5455. Yeah. See Pablo Francisco this weekend at the Irvine Improv. More of your telephone calls are coming up. Tom, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. We have time for a few phone calls before Likas 101. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, hello, John. Your job. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm calling to tell you that I know what's going to make uh, John McCain win this election. And I think that uh, what's going to make John McCain win this election is going to be experience. Nothing else but experience on national affairs. Yeah, and what kind think, of experience? What, 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 wait, 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 stop. All right, you're going on hold because when I say stop, when you keep going, <laughs> that means I'm not going to get into a shouting match with you. Uh, specifically, specifically, what experience are you talking about? I'm talking about national security. Specifically. I'm talking about defending this country. Specifically, what has he specifically done? What has he specifically done? Just look yes. at his record. No, no, I know you look at it and tell me what he's done. He has done a lot of things. Like okay. what? I can't think of one right now. You can't I'm think of one. Well, then her. I tell you what, when you can, call back. I'm Sarah on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Thank you for taking my call. I appreciate sure. it. Um, I just wanted to point out that Reverend Wright's church uh, certainly does allow white people. Um, you can look up the church online. Um, there's been white politicians that have attended. Um they do state that their church is unabashedly Afrocentric. Um, so they certainly promote the black lifestyle, black people, African-American heritage, etc. Um, 
But that caller that you had that said white people weren't allowed was misinformed, probably read that in a chain email, and I'm just so tired of people like that. Um, so I wanted to point that out to you and also suggest that people look at websites like factcheck.org and Snopes, because um, if it sounds crazy, it's probably not true. Yeah. I, and by the way, I know that's true. Uh, I'm just trying to get out of the idea of even debating what churches people attend. I mean, who cares? I, I, I don't really care. You know, I'm an atheist. To me, they're all hocus pocus. Right. Yeah, and he also was talking about, kept asking, do you think race has to do with why so many uh, black people are voting this time? And I would counter, do you think race has to do with why so many of these conservatives are not voting for Barack and not even listening to his issues because they're sort of inbred, uh, not to use the term inbred, but, you know, their racism uh, that runs really deep won't allow them to even um, look at the real facts about Barack, and their racism is causing them to stick with people like Sarah Palin and John McCain. Well, yeah, you could also argue the reason uh, that black people have not voted in larger numbers in past years was race also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, um, you know, your points about Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton, I completely agree. And um, based on the issues alone, I go to both websites. Um, I've read pretty much every page on both sites, and I believe um, that my values are being represented by Barack Obama, and that's the only reason why I'm going to be voting for him. So well, I really my, encourage... my values my values happen to include intellect. <laughs> okay, good, and mine do uh, too. If you, I've I've made some simple rules, a litmus test, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, if you cannot pronounce the words nuclear or pundit. <laughs> right. you, I will not vote for you. Good call. <laughs> so that lets out Sarah Palin, John McCain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's getting more and more awkward as this campaign goes on. It's almost hilarious. Because he knows he's going to lose. Exactly. Exactly. He doesn't like to lose. When's the last time John McCain lost an election? Right. <laughs> I don't know. Probably By the never. way, did, did you see uh, they've already made their election night plans, both Obama and McCain? And Obama will do what candidates traditionally do on uh, 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 election night. Um, he will appear before a ballroom of his supporters in Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, John McCain, on the other hand, is going to break tradition. This is true. Really? And instead of appearing in front of a ballroom of his supporters in Arizona, where he lives... Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to appear on the front steps of a hotel. I believe it's the Ritz-Carlton Hotel huh. in Phoenix. Uh, and talk to a, a pool of reporters. That's it. So he can run back inside. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Huh. Well, Tom, I really appreciate these topics you're covering, just like people are saying. But, um, you know, especially for people that are hearing crazy things about either side. Just like, you know, when people are saying that the... Sarah Palin's youngest was really her daughter's first child or something. That was totally made up. And so, you know, I don't believe everything that the liberals or the Democrats say about McCain and Sarah Palin. Um, but, you know, the opposite side is certainly true. And I hope people are really looking at uh, the real information because it is out there. Good points. Thank you for that, Sarah. Let's say hi to Steve on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Steve. How are you doing? Love your. I mean, John, uh, Tom, I love the show. Love you. But I got an opposing view here. All right. Now, last night, I believe, you were um, debating the fact why uh, we shouldn't uh, vote for Palin because she spent uh, thousands of dollars to shuttle her kids around in Alaska on some airline. On various airlines and, and stay in first-class hotels. Okay. And, well, uh, I've been watching the Internet lately, and... I've seen uh, several uh, web uh, uh, emails that have stated that uh, Obama's... We're not talking going... about web emails. You, I'm talking about a legitimate news organization, right, such right. as are... the Associated Press, the United Press International, for... Reuters, uh, a legitimate newspaper, the Washington right. Post, even the Washington Times, the New York Times... Uh, the Boston Globe, the Wall Street Journal, these are legitimate publications. Anybody can create an email and post it on the web. 
Well, that, actually, these that, were, is not, that proves absolutely nothing. Well, no, these were actually clips from news uh, broadcasts. Well, no, 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 that's what someone claimed were clips. Okay, but they were actual footage from, I forgot his name, I think it's Hadley or something. And Who? he, uh, unrefutable Who? proof. Hello? Who? I'm not sure. You don't even know who you're quoting. It's one of those political commentary shows. But you don't even know who you're quoting. Well, I saw I saw the clip. It's, but I, that, who knows where that clip aired? Who knows who aired it? But these, it's common knowledge. These are things that are common knowledge, Tom. That, well, I, what common knowledge are you going to give? It's common knowledge. I don't understand why you need to call in and tell us about it. What common knowledge would that be? That Obama's cronies have siphoned off millions of dollars... While Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae have failed. This is not common knowledge, nor is it a fact. Okay. Okay, Tom, I got one more question for you. Hello? I'm waiting. Um, you say you don't want children and everything. Now you've got all this money. Who? What kind of legacy are you going to leave that money behind to? <laughs> uh, sir, you, you are obviously not very creative. Um... You do not have to have blood relatives. I've got various people who have been good to me in my life, including my brother, my cousin, other folks. I do not have to have a baby to give that money away. It's the Tom Likas Show.